Good morning, listeners. My name is Jessica, and I'm the Communications Director for Philip A. Jones Consulting, LLC, as well as the podcast producer for The Wall Behind and Beyond. We had an overwhelming number of great questions from our listeners, so let's get started. Our esteemed host, Philip Jones, is sitting on the other side of the microphone today. How are you doing today, Philip? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing great. I wanted to start out with some of our basic questions for you so that our listeners can get an idea of who you are. To start, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where were you born? Where did you grow up? Well, I'm the oldest of uh, my mother's three kids. Uh, I'm born and raised in Baltimore City, Maryland. Uh, I come from a neighborhood on the southwest side of the city uh, called Westport. Uh, it's where all of my family remains and resides to this day. Um, and yeah, that's where it's at. All right. And you said that um, you grew up on the west side of Baltimore. Where is that for our listeners who aren't familiar with Baltimore? Well, unless you've been there, you probably won't know even <laughs> if I explained it, but it's a part of the city that's really close to downtown. It's it's like basically two minutes a walking distance from downtown. That's the west side. Um, I can walk from where I live to the Raven Stadium and probably get there in five minutes. So we were close to everything. It's very urban, you know what I mean? But it's still low income, and it's a project uh, housing. Well, I bet there are a lot of Ravens fans out there who are pretty excited to hear that. When you were growing up in Baltimore with your family, what was your childhood like? What were some of the you know, the difficulties and hurdles that you faced? Uh, me and my brothers, you know what I'm saying? It was like we had to raise ourselves because our parents was, um, they had challenges, you know, uh, dealing with all kinds of addictions. And just coming up in an environment of poverty, you know what I mean? There's a lot of stress on families. So my parents were struggling before we was even born. Uh, but uh, we had to pretty much learn how to survive. So me and my brothers were stuck together, and we would go out into the streets, uh, even when our parents was nowhere to be found. Um, and we got caught up in a lot of things. So I would say it was a, a childhood of neglect uh, and basically uh, us trying to figure it out. Uh, without any parental guidance. So that's why I always say I was misdirected. I think there's a lot of people that um, that story resonates with. Um, you had mentioned something in one of your writings that um, you were kind of the financial support for yourself and your younger brothers when you were quite young. Um, tell us a little bit about that experience. Me being the oldest, you know, I was a hustler. You know, I had to go out there and get it any way I could so we could eat. Um, so my brothers had clothes and shoes. Um, so for me, it started off at first going to the market at like the age of 10, um, helping people with their bags, getting 50 cents a bag. Um, back then, we talking about the early 80s, you know, you do that a few times, you know, you got a, you got like 10 bucks, and uh, that goes a long way when you're a kid. Um, after that, I used to go to the gas station and help people pump their gas. They'd give me a dollar. Um, I'd save it until I could go and buy something to eat. Gradually, after that, I just picked up more and more things to do. Some of it was um, illegal. Um, I'd hit trains. Or, you know, I'd hit the, the, the trucks that was um, waiting to deliver products to the stores when I'd seen them. I'd check and see if they were open. You know, I'm not proud of any of this. This is just the way that I was taught to survive. Um, I followed behind people that was older than me um, in my neighborhood, and they was all doing it, and I didn't have any parents to stop me, so I went out there and did the same thing they did. So I do all that so that I could make sure we had food on the table and so that my brothers wasn't hungry from starvation or crying because they, they couldn't, you know, didn't have nothing to eat. So, you know, that was my past, my childhood. What was your first actual experience um, being involved with the justice system, and how old were you? Um... I think I was 12 or 11. Um, I was throwing rocks um, at a neighborhood female that I was attracted to. She was my peer. Um, but, again, you know, it's crazy because, you know, you like somebody, but you're throwing rocks at them. I thought, I guess I didn't have any game. Or I didn't know how to speak. And so <laughs> I just was doing whatever I could to make her know that I was interested. Unfortunately, that rock hit her mother's car window. So, me being who I am, I went to her house with her and told her mom that I take responsibility for it, and I called my, my father. Um, he agreed to pay for it. Uh, the police gave me a citation, and then we had to go to court. So they charged me with some malicious destruction. Um, and then 
when I went to court, they made me wait in juvenile for 30 days before they gave me probation. So that was my first uh, interaction with the system. Philip, thank you so much for sharing that with us. I know that our listeners are going to be really excited about the next episode of our show, and I really appreciate you for joining us on the opposite side of the microphone this morning. No problem. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it very much. Until next time, stay tuned for the next episode of Inside Out Insight, where Philip goes into more depth about his experiences within the justice system. Thank you all for tuning in.